All right, folks, it's Bass Action back in action here. On this video, what we're gonna actually be working with is the green foldable that you have, and we will be working in the upper left-hand corner of that foldable. So if you open the top left window of your foldable where it says parallelograms, you'll see the space that we have right here. So just go ahead and open that up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the properties of a parallelogram. Many of these you're gonna be familiar with from your elementary days and your middle school days of working with these, but we're gonna look at um, them in a little more depth and probably introduce a few that you might not know right off the top of your head. All right, so first of all, on a parallelogram, the very first thing that we can actually think about is the definition of a parallelogram. And our definition of a parallelogram says that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So that gives us actually our first characteristic. Now I'm gonna do a little abbreviation here. I'm gonna use the abbreviation BP for both pairs throughout this entire foldable. It'll just save us a little bit of writing. So from our definition, we can say that both pairs of my opposite sides are parallel. So we can mark that in our figure right away. So we can mark our parallel lines, and any time you have a parallelogram, this property would exist. Now, the next proper that, property that we're gonna list is actually more of a property related to our parallel lines than it is so much really a parallelogram. And that one is that consecutive angles are supplementary. Now, really the consecutive angles supplementary are simply because they're going to be consecutive interior angles for some parallel lines. So for example, if these lines are parallel and this is our transversal, then these two angles would have to be supplementary. Same thing is that if these lines are parallel and this was my transversal, then these angles would be supplementary. So what we can fill in in these blanks here, where I'm looking, let's say at angle E right here, I know that angle E should be supplementary to angle T, and it should also be supplementary to angle L. So I can fill that in, angle T and angle L. Then I can also look at angle A up here in this opposite corner, and again, working with my parallel lines, my angle A should be supplementary to the angle L, and angle A should be supplementary to angle T. So I can actually list those same angles again. Now, the next property that we're going to look at is one that I'm sure that you've used almost a million times at this point, and we're gonna use that BP again. Both pairs of our opposite sides are not just parallel. Now we know that they're congruent. And I know you guys have done this plenty of times. So these opposite sides here are gonna be congruent, and these opposite sides here are going to be congruent. So that's another one that you're already familiar with. The next one that we're going to look at is one that you might not already know, and that's going to be that the diagonals bisect each other. So if we draw in our diagonals here, we can actually just draw these in, and what you can do is if you have your compass handy or um, any kind of a ruler, any measuring device, you can even actually just kind of estimate it with your fingers. But what you should be able to quickly see is that these two pieces, this piece right here and this piece right here, that this piece is going to be congruent to this piece. Furthermore, we can see that these two pieces, and notice I'm using a different set of tick marks every single time, that these two pieces are going to be congruent to each other. So you should be able to quickly measure maybe with your fingers or your compass or a ruler to show that these two are equal and these two are equal. Now, when we say that they bisect each other, that's also another way of saying that they share the same midpoint. So this point right here is the midpoint of each of the diagonals. So each diagonal has the exact same midpoint as the other diagonal. Our last property that we are going to say is that both pairs of our opposite angles 
are congruent to each other. Now, we can look at this from an algebraic standpoint, a property that we looked at congruent supplements, so to speak, that we did at the very beginning of the school year, or at least sometime in the first semester. And the congruent supplement said that if an angle is supplementary to the same angle, so if I have two angles and they're supplementary to the same angles, just as I have here, so angle E and angle A are both supplementary to angle T and L, what the congruent supplement says is that angle E and angle A should be congruent to each other. And that's exactly what we can mark in our picture. So I can say that this whole angle right here is congruent to this whole angle right here. I can also say the same thing about angle T and angle L, but we need to be careful because we've drawn in our diagonals at this point. So I've got my angle T. And, or my angle L and my angle T here, so these angles. And sometimes what students like to do is they actually even like to kind of color these angles, the actual corners, to make it stand out that we're talking about the entire angle. Okay, so those are the five properties of a parallelogram, and anytime you have a parallelogram, all five of these properties will exist.